Uh, continuing on with our discussion uh, related to the importance of eyewitness accounts as um, it applies to the um, uh, reliability of the scripture, the Bible, uh, we covered a number of different eyewitness types that the Bible, the scripture, the word of God reveals to us, one of it being the Holy Spirit, the other being the scripture itself, another being our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Now we're going to look at also other eyewitness accounts. For instance, the apostles who were with our Lord Jesus Christ himself are our eyewitness. Uh, we find an example of this uh, throughout uh, the New Testament and even throughout the Bible, including the Old Testament, like the prophets, for instance. Nevertheless, in, uh, some of the examples I'm going to share with you right now from the New Testament show us that some of those apostles that were with our Lord were eyewitness to certain things. For instance, in Acts chapter 8, verses 34 and 35, which we read last time, uh, last time we used this to show that the scripture is an eyewitness, here... Philip, the apostle, is also an eyewitness. How do we know this? Because in the context of this, uh, he was in obedience, of course, to the Holy Spirit. He himself served with Christ as one of the apostles. And now he is familiar also here with the scripture and was able to walk this seeker, the Ethiopian eunuch, through the scripture to show him why the passage that the Ethiopian eunuch was reading from Isaiah 53, why that passage applies to our Lord Jesus Christ. And we read this here very clearly where it says, Then Philip opens his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And obviously, if we look at the Gospels, we'll see that Philip was one of the apostles, the twelve and he was one of those that Jesus commanded him, just as he commanded us in the Great Commission, to go and make disciples. And he's one of those also that Jesus reminded him that the Holy Spirit will bring to his remembrance the things that Jesus taught him. And here, in this particular chapter, we see that Philip went and met with this Ethiopian eunuch in obedience to the Holy Spirit who prompted him to do so. Let's see another example about another apostle who was also an eyewitness to an account that took place uh, during his time with our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we read in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 17 about an incident that is known as the Mount of Transfiguration, where our Lord took with him a couple of those apostles, and before their eyes, he, his body, and his clothing was glorified, and they saw a, the glorified uh, person of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the thing is, uh, Peter, who was one of those apostles that joined our Lord on that mountain, is recording to us now in one of his letters, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 to 18, that he was an eyewitness to this incident. As we read this, we see that Peter makes reference to that, and he says, For we, referring to himself and the apostles, did not follow cleverly devised myth when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, he's saying, we're really not cheating here. We're not trying to be clever. We're not trying to invent ways when we're sharing with you the gospel we did not follow. The we here is reference to him and the apostles. But rather, this is what he says, for, we, oh, for when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was born to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. He's making a reference to that incident. Before that, he says, we were eyewitness of his majesty. This majesty that he's referring to, the glory that he saw, he himself, the Apostle Peter, was an eyewitness to it. And that's why he's recording it to us here. That's very important for us to remember that Peter is recording something that he himself saw and experienced. Here's another example by another Apostle who was an eyewitness to the writing of 
a second apostle. In this case, the apostle Peter is writing to us that he also was a witness to the writing of the apostle Paul. And we find this in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. Here's where he says, Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish, and at peace, and count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul. He's making a reference to Paul here. And notice what he says, also wrote to you according to the wisdom given him. So he's making a reference to something that Paul wrote. And he's also referring to the fact that Paul's writing was given to him. In other words, he was inspired to write these things. And then we see the rest of this passage. What is it that he's talking about here in terms of Paul's writing? He says, as he, meaning Paul, does in all his letters. So here we see that the Apostle Peter have access to Paul's letters. When he speaks in them of these matters, which matters? Matters related to salvation. There are some things in them, meaning in the letters that Paul wrote, that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction. Meaning there are people that twist the meanings, try to corrupt it. Why? Because they do this as they do to what, he says, to other scripture. In other words, Peter is associating the writings of Paul to scripture, calling it inspired by God, that wisdom was given to him. And people who corrupt the meanings of his writings, they do the same thing with other scripture as well. This is very important testimony here from one of the apostles, one of the twelve, the chief apostle Peter, who was with our Lord, testifying that the writings of Paul is Scripture. Here is another example. Here, Paul now, in this case, actually quoting from the writing of someone else. In this case, he's quoting from the writing of Luke. This is what he says. For the Scripture says... You shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain and the laborer deserves his wages. It will be interesting for us to know that what Paul is referring to here in 1 Timothy 5.18 is actually two part, two scriptures. One from the Old Testament, which is this one. You shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain we find this particular one in the Old Testament and in particular in Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 4. But then he proceeded also to say, and, and gave us another passage, the laborer deserves his wages. It is interesting to see that this one came actually from Luke and the chapter is chapter 10, verse 7, where the Lord himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the one who is speaking here. So Paul actually not only quoted from the scripture as an eyewitness to the matter that he is sharing about, but he also quoted from both Old Testament and New Testament writing. And in this case, he's basically testifying that the writings of the apostle, uh, uh, writings of Paul, Paul, uh, Luke, who was with him in his travel, in many places, these writings are actually considered to be scripture. Why? Because he calls it the scripture. And this is why the testimony of the apostles is important, not just of their own writings, but of the writings of other prophets and other apostles. Now let's look at Luke himself now. Notice how Luke investigated everything related to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ before he wrote his gospel. This is what he says. Now, he's writing this as a letter to a person. His name is Theophilus. And he's starting this gospel by saying this, Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that have been accomplished among us. There is a lot of things here that we need to pay attention to. 
He is referring to many people who have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that happened among us or accomplished among us. So you have people who were writing and collecting and people who are witnessing all of these things that are happening. He says this is basically the foundation for his writing of this gospel, the gospel of Luke. Just as those, he says, who from the beginning were eyewitnesses. Who were those? Everybody, including the apostles. From the beginning of the work of our Lord, they were eyewitnesses to what? To Jesus' life, to Jesus' crucifixion, to Jesus' burial, to Jesus' resurrection, and to his appearance after his resurrection, and his work that he has done as well. He says they were eyewitnesses and ministers of what? Of the Word. Who is the Word here? That's our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God, the Word incarnate, basically. God incarnate, the Word that became flesh. This is what he is referring to. Let's look at another example. Continuing with the same passage here from Luke 1, verses 1 to 4, the apost uh, basically Luke proceeded to say uh, this, uh, the following. It seems good to me, he says, now that we have all of these people who compiled, who investigated, who were eyewitnesses, he said, it seemed good to me as well also, having followed all things closely, and the words that were used here in the original language indicate an investigative reporting, a documentary, if you wish, where he himself went and checked all the available eyewitness and all of the things that happened from the past so that he can write an orderly account, meaning organized in a certain fashion, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and... This is basically what I am delivering to you, most excellent Theophilus. I gave you something that collected all of these evidence that were available to me. In Acts chapter 1, verse 1, the, uh, once again, Luke says this. He says, in the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach. Which book? He's referring Theophilus, basically, to his first book known as the Gospel of Luke. So this is basically what Luke is referring to here. He's asking Theophilus to go to his first book that he wrote to him, which we just have looked at, so that he can use that book also as another eyewitness to what he is reporting to him here in the second book, second letter, which is the book of Acts. Let's look also at how our Lord was asking the apostles to be an eyewitness to what they have witnessed about him. Jesus said to Philip here, that's the reference of this pronoun, to him is a reference to Philip. He said, Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus is saying, you are with me. You know me. You've witnessed me. You've been with me. Therefore, you can report what you have seen. Let's see now how John actually demonstrated that to us in his first epistle. In 1 John 1, verses 1 and 2, we read the following. John is saying, speaking about Jesus, he said, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, talking about Jesus and the gospel, which we have seen. So we've heard, we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon, which we have touched with our hands, 
concerning the word of life in reference to our Lord himself. So notice what's going on. He's saying we testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life. So this is very important to see that the apostles heard, seen, looked and watched, and touched. And therefore, they can testify as eyewitness accounts of what transpired. And with that, we will move on in the next time to talk about other evidence of why eyewitness account is important, and we'll talk about other types of eyewitness account as well.